Yo, yo, yo everyone, Joey here and in this video we will explore seven techniques on how to bring your product shots to life through motion and shoot something like this. Ever wonder about the first human who thought, man, I'd like to squeeze some liquid out of that thing and drink it? Well, me neither. And I tell you what, I'd rather drink a sustainable plant-based dairy alternative. It's better for you. And it's better for that dusty blue marble we're living on. And hey, ain't nothing more American than plants. Am I right? Oatly. It's like milk made for humans. Alright, so if you're a regular on YouTube, you may be wondering right now, why on earth am I watching yet another tutorial on how someone else is shooting product shots? And hold on, I know I've been there and I'm doing it myself all the time and I'm actually watching the whole video all the time because I know there's always one or two little bits and pieces of information in the BTS, in the overall creative concept, in the execution that I find inspirational. So if there's anything that you take away from this video, please let us know down in the comment section below. And let's just jump right into the first way to bring motion to your product shots, which is a very obvious one. Now of all the ways you can shoot a product, handheld is possibly the easiest to pull off and the most flexible. You can imitate slides, push-ins, rotations, jib reveals or completely freestyle. The ideal way to approach handheld shooting is to plot out your shots in a shot list beforehand so that you can easily transition from one movement to the next. Obviously there's a lot of hit and miss and you just want to keep the movements short and sweet. Now shooting with a camera that has autofocus or having a second person, a second AC to help you pull focus makes things easier. Alternatively, you can just focus on the end point and then move in to the end point. Actually, it's easier if you start on the end point, move out and then reverse the shot. And also another trick is shooting in slow motion that will make your shots a little bit more stable and smooth. But keep in mind that you want to make the movement faster because you slow it down in post. Ideally, if you have a little crew or an actor, you combine the motion of the camera with the action that's happening. So for example, if someone pours something in, you can move your camera with the motion and it gives your shots a little bit more, more dynamic action as well. Now if you want to be a little bit more steady and smooth, you want to use a video fluid head. A good use case for that is when you shoot on a longer lens or if you shoot macro shots. With a fluid head alone, you are limited to tilting and panning or the combination of both. And so you wanna use this mostly when you have like slower shots in contrast to your faster movements. A little tip, if you don't have the smoothest fluid head, you can use a rubber band. I don't have one right now. I don't even have a fluid head here right now, but you can pull it basically at the handle and it allows you to have a little bit of a more a smoother transition from the start to the end point. Now a little bonus tip, if you can call it such, but since you're generally not recording audio when you're shooting products, just blast music. At least that's what I do and get completely into the zone. Also, you may want to play the song that you will use in your final edit to get into the vibe, to get the feeling for the pace, which is particularly important when it comes to motion. Now, the possibly most used tool in the context of product filmmaking is a turntable, oftentimes motorized. Some call it Lazy Susan. The jury's still out on who coined that term and why it's called that way, but I guess it's fun to say. Unless your name is Susan, or someone's name on set is Susan, then you may want to avoid that term and say turntable to avoid any confusion or conflict. I've been using motorized turntables now for ages for my product shots and you can get them for fairly cheap like on Adorama or Amazon. The one I got was 30 bucks and it gets its job done though you cannot change the speed. What I like about it is that it's super simple. You just put your product down and you get quickly a dimensional view on the product while keeping the lighting setup the same. So it, it helps to just quickly switch out products you want to shoot. Um, well this is the same. Uh, and just keep the, the lighting the same. So very handy. More often than not, I actually place my surface like an acrylic plate on top of the Lazy Susan, have it rotate with it. And from there, I just go experiment with angles and framing. 
notch up from our previous options and a little more cash commitment is using a motion control system that allows you to dial in precise movements on the pan and tilt as well as oftentimes on the horizontal, the slide axis. With such system, the shaky hands or human arrow are history and there's no need to shoot in slow motion unless it's a creative choice or take shots over and over again until you nail them. You just dial them in once and boom, there you have it. It also allows you to pull off very intricate shots that are otherwise extremely difficult to pull off. And I've been using motorized sliders like the Edelkron mini slider thingy and the Moser a slide pod, but I've always had my eye on a full motion control system. Now thanks to Rhino we get to try out the Arc 2 motion control system and let's talk about it for a second, what I like, what I don't like, so you can form your own opinion about it. Yes they sent me this unit for review but I can say whatever I want and they don't see that video before you do, so let's get right into it. So the Rhino Arc 2 is basically a motorized fluid head that you can put either on top of your tripod or on one of Rhino's sliders and make it basically full-fledged motion control system. And one thing you will notice, or one thing you will not notice right now, is how quiet it is. Well, that doesn't matter when you shoot product shots as we've already established, but if you shoot interviews or if you film yourself like we do right now, you don't hear it. All I hear is actually the light. With Cena cameras like the Red Komodo or the Panasonic EVA1 and the added weight of Cena lenses and monitors, the weight payload capacity becomes a make and break decision when you pick a motion control system. And the Rhino Arc 2 has a max payload of up to 15 pounds or around seven kilos. Now with these heavier rigs, you wanna set your Arc 2 into the heavy mode, which actually limits the tilt motion to a certain degree. I guess you can try out the normal mode. I've tried it out with the Komodo and it works, but you still wanna use the heavy mode. And even then, you wanna make sure that the camera's center of gravity is still properly in the center of the mounting point uh, to avoid any any micro shakes that, that I got even like uh, when I tried and played around with it. So there's always the danger of it. You just need to adjust the motion sometimes to, to get it really dialed in. Talking about weight, this whole setup here, the Essentials bundle with a 24 inch carbon fiber slider weighs around 12 pounds or around 5.5 kilos and comes with this nice carrying case. Now, would I go on a three hour hike with this? Meh, possibly not, but it's definitely easy to carry around if you shoot somewhere else. Now, the one big upside with the Arc 2 and the slider is that you can dial in extremely precise and slow motions, which comes very handy when you shoot on longer lenses or particularly when you shoot with macro lenses like the Laowa probe lens. Honestly, I always felt a little bit limited on what I could do with this fascinating lens until I got this motion control system. Because before I was always tinkering around with the Lazy Susan and trying to get the movement and the focus lined up. But that changed now with the Arc 2 and the optional focus motor, which allows me to precisely dial the movement in. Though with a focus motor you have to keep in mind, I ran into like some issues with like stiffer Cena lenses and especially when you go out in the polar vortex in very cold temperatures it's even getting harder and sometimes it skips gears. So you want to keep that in mind. Indoors it's not much of a problem but when it's outdoors and cold you may run into issues. Lastly you can control the whole shebang on the device itself with the knobs and dials and the display and basically set it up and without the need of any additional device. You can set your two keyframes, basically your start and end point of the motor motions right on the device. It's limited right now to two keyframes uh, and they're promising to add more soon. So that would be very helpful in particular for product shoots. There is also an iOS app which allows you obviously to control the device but also do some dope face tracking when you mount the phone on top of your camera. But it doesn't exist for Android. So bummer, failure when you have an Android phone. Again, like always. All in all, the Arc 2 goes for $1,400 and the Essentials bundle is $2,350 which includes the slider and the slider motor and this carrying bag. As always, I leave the links in the description below if you fancy checking them out. 
All right, before we move on to the next motion, let me share with you a trick of the trade on how to create water droplets on your object. So instead of using just water, spray water on it, you actually use a solution, a mixture of water and glycerin. Usually a like two to one ratio of glycerin to water. And glycerin is a pure versatile skincare product, but it's an oily substance that very much looks like water, but the nice thing is it's a little thicker and accumulates more nicely into droplets on your can, on your glass, on your bottle, and you can create that fresh look in with this combo. Let's move on. Now a great and absolutely free way to bring motion. Oops. Am I gesticulating too much? Apparently. Now a great way to bring motion to your scene without moving the camera around is actually bringing motion to your subject. Now we already talked about the Lazy Susan, but how about just like putting down the subject with your hand in during the scene or pour a liquid. Now with smaller items like the oats we had, you can also just throw them in the air or drizzle them down or pour them together with the milk and it's an absolute mess, trust me. Anytime you work with food in product shots, Get ready for a mess. Oats everywhere. Now before we get into the final two motions, let's quickly talk about the cool things you can do with a VPN, like from our sponsor today, NordVPN. Now I'm sure you've been there. This foreign movie you desperately want to watch is not available on your streaming service in your country, but in another country. Why? What a bummer, but NordVPN can help you with that by routing your internet traffic through their super fast service in 60 countries, and boom, there you have it, your niche fancy movie. Or, if you're an expat and you want to watch the TV channels of your home country, for example, to watch your favorite football team play in the wee morning hours every Sunday for decades, well, NordVPN can make that possible as well, but they cannot prevent them from losing. I checked. It doesn't work that way. NordVPN is running a special promotion right now, so just go to nordvpn.com slash joeyhelms and enter the promo code joeyhelms, that's my name, to get 70% off and an extra additional month for free. Just like that. Links in the description below. Another neat way to bring motion to your product shoots is by neither moving your camera nor your subject, but actually by moving a light around it. You can quickly create some scanning motions, rotating motions that, especially with reflective surfaces, bring the product to life and make it really pop. It all comes down to just experimenting and trying things out. You generally want to avoid your light source from reflecting on the reflective surfaces of your subject. So use a soft light source that generally helps with it. I won't go into much depth of lighting in this video because there will be a separate video coming out on how to light your product shoots very soon, so stay tuned for that. Last but not least, it's a little bit of a cheat code. Let's say you're getting a beautifully framed static shot that would be simply too difficult to inject with motion in practical terms. You can just add digitally some motion. I do that all the time because it's simple and has some great effects. That's why it's so nice to shoot in 6K because you can crop in and your output is still in 4K territory and I use it even with motion shots just to enhance the effect just a little bit more. Now, no matter what technique you use in order to bring motion to your product shots, keep two things in mind. First, variety is key to keep the interest up, to keep your audience engaged. And second, don't use a motion just for the motion's sake. It needs to make sense in the grand scheme of your concept and in alignment with your product. Now you can obviously you combine all these techniques and get very creative. This is a common theme in these videos. As always, I leave links to more information and the products in the description below and also there will be a video coming very soon where we talk about lighting product shots. So Sorry to interrupt, but this is an opportune time for you to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Trust me, it's worth it. What he said. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye bye. Okay. On a motorized slider as well. How am I doing this? Well, possibly because it's right on it right now. Yo, 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 crew, Joey here. And in this video, we will explore seven techni techni techniques, 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 techniques.